hey welcome back to another video so in today's video we're actually going to learn how we can use ui kit in swift ui and in order to do that we're actually going to improve the ui and ux of our news app that we built um, previously now if you've not built this it's fine i'll put a card at the top here so you can check out that tutorial but essentially what we're going to do is we're going to use a component in a ui kit called sf safari view controller that's a lot of words in it. So essentially what we're gonna do is when someone taps on a link, rather than taking them to Safari in the um, phone, we're actually going to keep them in the app and present the web page from the bottom like this. So if I just click on this link here, you'll see how it loads it in the app. So the user never leaves the app and they can read the article and if they hit done, they're back to where they started. So this is just a better uh, UI and UX experience for users, um, you know, using your app if you have links or you need to handle links. So let's jump straight into the video and see how we can do this now. So what we're gonna do essentially is we're actually going to basically start to build our component. So the first we need to do is we need to build a Swift UI view that will hold our UI kit component. So what I'm gonna do is in views, and uh, we're just gonna create a new view called um, SF um, Safari view. So let's do that now. So it's gonna be a Swift UI view. All right, cool. And the next thing we need to do is we actually need to import the framework um, Safari services. So this is the framework in UI kit that basically allows you to use an SF Safari view controller. So let's do that. So if you want to use UI kit in Swift UI, we need to use a representatable um, protocol. So essentially what this protocol is, is it basically allows you to either represent a view, um, a view controller or some sort of component that isn't a Swift UI view. So in our case, because we're going to be dealing with a view controller, because that's what SF Safari view controller is, we're essentially going to use a UI uh, view controller representable. So let's do that now. So let's break this down now. So the first thing you've probably noticed is that we've actually changed the type um, of this view. So instead of it being a view, it's now of type UI view controller representable. So what this is going to do essentially is it's going to allow us to enclose and, you know, use our UI kit component within this view. Now, because we're using um, the protocol here, we actually don't need this body anymore. So you can actually delete this. Cool. And the reason why we don't need that body anymore is because it's not a, this isn't of a type of view anymore. So we don't need to give it some kind of body. Instead, we need to implement the protocols that this is telling us to implement. So what this will do is we'll actually complain. So if you click on the arrow and it will say that you need to fix it. So what we need to do is we need to hit fix. And we basically get this thing um, here called a type alias UI view controller type. So essentially what this is saying is it's basically asking you, okay, so what is the type of view controller you want to try and represent in UI kit? And like I said before, we want to represent our SF Safari view controller. So let's use that here now. All right, cool. So now we've done that. So the next thing that we need to do is we actually need to implement the protocols that's telling us to implement. So let's do that also. So the next thing we need to do is actually implement the protocols. So the next, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to type out these protocols now, and then you can follow along um, after I do this, and we'll actually break this down. So let's do that now. All right, cool. So essentially what we have now is we have two protocol functions. So let's just break down what they are. So the first one, make UI view controller. So if you look at this, you can see that Swift is actually, you know, the compiler is smart enough to realize that you want to make a SF Safari view controller. So this is where you, it's basically um, create and instantiate your view controller that you want to use from UI kit. And this function update ui view controller is essentially where we want to update our view so let's say for example if we want to change the background color or we want to call a certain function in our view controller this is where we can do that here so the best way to think about this is this is where you create and initialize the object and this is where you update and style or call functions for that object so what we're going to do now is we're going to resolve the issue where it's saying we need to return a view controller and we're actually going to return a SS Safari view controller now. So let's do that. <laughs> okay, cool. So let's just break down what we've done. So I've actually created a new constant here called URL. 
And the reason being is because we want to inject our URL into this view. So we're going to use this to load the URL that we inject into here, you know, staying with that pattern of single source of truth. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to basically instantiate our view controller. So you can see here our SF Safari view controller with our URL, and then we're going to return the view controller. Now we've got an error here at the bottom because obviously we've not actually, you know, passed in a URL yet. So let's resolve that now. All right, cool. So you may be wondering why have I not done anything inside of the update UI view controller function? Well, the reason being is because with SF Safari view controller, it's pretty much just like a web view. And um, so I just literally just wanted to load the URL for me. Now, if I want to style a different type of view controller, like let's say a map, um, and I want to call, you know, start looking for locations or whatever, then I do that in here, but there's nothing of that type of context to do. So we can just leave this empty for now. So what we need to do now is we actually need to start to actually use this in our Swift UI code. So let's look at how we can do that now. All right, so since we've now got our, um, you know, view in the old video that I mentioned before. So in the news app video, which I'll link again, if you missed a link to it, and um, we actually did open up links via Safari on the actual device. Now, because we're going to keep this in, in the app now, we actually don't need that old code anymore. So what we're going to do first is we're actually going to remove some of that old code. So let's do that now. So what I want to do is at the top here where it says open URL and um, just delete this. And then if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a function called load um, URL. Well, we want to actually delete the use of this. So let's delete that. And if you scroll all the way down, we want to delete this whole function called load. So let's just delete this whole function. All right, cool. So now we've took out the stuff that we don't need. So what we're actually going to do in order to actually use, um, you know, our new view is we're actually going to use a Swift UI property wrapper, um, you know, for handling data flow. And we're going to use a state. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tap this out now, and then we'll break it down a bit. So let's do that now. <clears throat> okay, cool. So as you can see, I basically created a state, um, you know, property wrapper, and we're going to basically have this new variable, which has been marked private, um, called, um, show supply review. So essentially the whole purpose of this view is to literally show our supply review and present it modally from the bottom. So if this is set to true, we're going to present our view that we just created before. And if it's set to false, then you're not going to see it on the screen. So what we need to do is in our article view on the on tap gesture, we actually need to set this to true because if someone taps an article, we actually want to show the Safari view. So let's do that now. All right, cool. So the next thing that we need to do um, after we've now added in the logic to show and hide our Safari view is we basically want to actually capture the um, article that's been selected. So what I'm just going to do is in our view model, we're basically just going to basically create a new property. So you go inside of your article view model implementation, and then we're going to create a new variable called um, selected article. So let's do that now. All right, cool. And as you can see, we've made this a optional article. So you might be wondering, why am I capturing the article here? So because our view is technically a struct, whenever it gets recreated, it basically doesn't capture a reference of our article that we're tapping in the list. So in order to basically get around that issue, what we need to do is we need to actually put our article somewhere that it gets referenced and stored in memory. And that stored in memory is a class. So that's why I've created this property in our view model called selected article. So the next thing we need to do is in our on tap gesture, we need to actually set the selected article. So let's do that now. So now what we need to do is we need to actually use our sheet modifier to basically present our SF Safari view from the bottom. So this is a new modifier that you may not have come across. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to type this out and then we'll break it down. So let's do that now. <clears throat> okay, let's break this down. 
So essentially what we're using here is the sheet modifier. So the sheet modifier is what we use in Swift UI to basically present views up from the bottom. So in this case, what we're essentially saying is we want to actually find whether the sheet is presented to our state variable show Safari view. So if you're new to this, this dollar sign basically indicates that this variable, this property is now a binding property. So what does that mean in this case? So what we're basically saying here is we're going to check if is presented is true or not. So if this is true, then we're actually going to execute what is in our content parameter, which we'll move on to next. But if it's false, then basically nothing's going to happen. So all this is doing is just watching what happens to our state variable. If we just scroll up, show Safari. So if our show Safari is true, like we've defined here, we're actually going to move into the next parameter called content. And inside of the content, all we essentially do is basically get our article from our view model that we stored in reference in memory. We get our URL to create a string URL, and then we create a URL object from that string. And then finally, we pass that into our SF Safari view, which in turn, will be presented by our sheet. So what we need to do now is we actually need to run this and actually see what happens. So let's do that now. So I'm just gonna hit run. All right, cool. So now that it's running, you can now see all my articles here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on a few articles. So I'm just gonna click on the first one. And as you can see, it now presents our SF Safari view controller inside of our app. So we get, we get a better user experience because the user's never actually left our app. So you can see how I can interact with the site like you would um, any other website. And we get all this stuff with the SF Safari view controller for free. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click off this. I'm actually going to select another article. So let's select this one down here. And you can see it's loaded up the right article. And the reason why it's doing that is because we capture the article in our class in reference so that we can basically present the right one. So we covered quite a lot in this video. So we covered, you know, some data flow, some presentation, but mainly how to handle UI kit in Swift UI. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. And also as well, if you have any feedback as well, leave it in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. So you hit the subscription button and hit the notification bell, you know, to get updates. I'm not asking for much, am I? <laughs> So that's everything from me uh, today. I'll talk to you all um, in a bit and I'll be coming out with obviously new videos very, very soon. So that's everything. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.